Hello, this is going to be a quick video on how to create a cinematic in CryEngine and do some very simple flow graph stuff to trigger that cinematic. So what we're going to do is set up a camera that moves around and have a character animate a little bit and that camera will, will focus on that character. So in order to create a cinematic we're going to use track view. So if we go to view, open view pane and track view um, and you'll get this window at the bottom here will open up. So the first thing we want to do is add a new sequence. So click add sequence and give it a name. So let's call it Cinematic 1 will do. And then we want to edit our sequence. So we want it to be a cutscene. We want to let's disable the HUD and let's disable the player so you can't move around. Um, 15 seconds will be plenty. Okay. Right, the first thing that we need to do is to add a director node to this. Um, that basically is a node that allows us to add other nodes and to, to control things. So let's add, if we, so, so right click on where it says cinematic one in the track view and go to add director node. This will bring in a, this is our, the camera that this director node is using. So this isn't actually a camera, this is the camera track. So we need to tell this camera track which camera to use. In order to do that, we need a camera for it to use. So let's add a camera. So we just go to miscellaneous and camera and just drop a camera into the scene somewhere. Okay, so now we've got a camera in the scene, let's add our camera to our track view sequence. So let's just right click and go to add, so yeah, so add selected entities. We need to make sure that our camera is selected and then we can add that camera. So now we've got, we can create keyframes for things like position, rotation, field of view. Right, now that we've got a camera, let's bring in a entity to look at with our camera. So let's bring in a character with some animation. So to do this, we're going to add a um, an anim object, so entity, physics, anim object. Let's drag that in. And we're going to have this guy just kind of standing at the front of, front door of this temple, maybe he's guarding it or something. So we want to change this sphere to be our character, so let's go to model and change this model and I'm going to go to objects, characters, I'm going to go into the humanoid one and select this guy, humanoid.cdf. So you can play around with these and have a look what's what's included with CryEngine, there's like a big dragon and stuff in there. Um, it's the CDF files that we want though because they are the ones that have all the animation and everything like that hooked up to them. So let's open that and let's position our guy where we want him. That looks pretty good. Okay, now we've got our creature in here. We need to add the creature to the track view. So same thing again, right click and add selected entities. So we've got a camera in there and we've got our animated object. Right, so let's. The first thing we can do then is let's add some animation for our character. So we've got a position rotation track. 
what we want though is we want a animation track so if we right click and go to add track and animation and there you can see we've we've got an animation so this is just a standard timeline that we can add keyframes to to add a keyframe in CryEngine you just double click on the timeline and you'll get this little green key and then we can select that key and because this is an animation track we can load in an animation so this guy has a load of animations that he comes with so I'm going to make him shift his weight a bit and then he's, I'm going to put another keyframe after and I'm going to get him to scratch his butt idle scratch butt, that's the one I want right um, so yeah if we play this now we can see he is doing those animations so he does his kind of idle shifting weight and then he scratches his butt so all we need to do now is to make our camera look at this guy and maybe do something interesting so okay like I said before this th this is the camera track this is the what camera this cinematic is going to use so we need to add a keyframe at the very start of this and tell the cinematic to use the correct camera because we could have like 20 cameras set up in here uh, we might be doing lots of like cuts from one camera to another so we can keyframe which camera it's using so just be the fact that we've only got one camera in here it doesn't mean that the cinematic knows that that's the camera we want to use we've still got to tell it so let's just add a keyframe on frame zero and tell it to use camera mine's called camera row two you probably have camera row one right now we should be using this camera for this cinematic so now we can start to keyframe in some position and rotation so we could uh, okay so when you're animating this camera what we can do is we can go into record mode and this is basically just going to, it's like auto key in 3ds max so we can rotate this and move it but obviously this is a bit awkward to see what our camera is doing so what we want to do is we want to look through our camera so in where, where it says perspective up here we just want to change our view to be the camera so there we go camera 2 is the one that we're now looking through and we won't well we shouldn't be able to move this okay I think because we're in record mode it's unlocked if you can't move it you just that's because lock camera movements off lock camera movement will probably be on by default so just uncheck that and then you'll be able to move your camera around then all we want to do is move on a few frames move the camera and you can see that's automatically keyframed let's move right to the very end of our animation and we'll move right up to our character something like that is fine so we can also we can go to our curve editor because if we play this now you'll see that there's a bit of a the camera moves to the first its first position and then it pauses and then it moves to the next one so we might want that but let's say we want it to be uh, a completely kind of smooth transition if we want to d change that we can go into our curve editor and let's we want to see the position keys so let's just select position then we can see all these keys and we can just for now let's just grab them all and just do set the tangents to auto 
So this is basically exactly the same as the curve editor that you get for animating in something like 3ds Max or pretty much any animation package. We'll do the same with the rotation. The auto should sort of smooth everything out. Um, let's go back to our um, so that we can see our keyframes and this should be a bit smoother now. Right, so that that's our animation done, or our cinematic done rather. Just watch it play. It's a bit slow, it's a bit boring. But obviously you can go mad with this stuff and add as much stuff as you like. So that's done now. Um, I can close down my track view editor. So the last thing that I want to do, let's go back to our default camera so we can move around again without messing up our camera we've set up. The last thing I want to do is I want to trigger this cinematic. So the way that I'm going to trigger it is using an area trigger. So I'm going to have the player kind of walking up here and when they get to about this point it'll play this cinematic to show that there's this guy guarding this, this hut temple, whatever you want to call it. So if we're going to hit a area then we need an area to hit so let's add a shape um, area shape entity and make sure this follow terrain is on and then we can just draw our shape in and it'll, it'll be on the terrain. Double click to finish and we need to make that, give that a bit of height in fact, I'm not sure I've... Yeah, it's a bit odd, but I know that's okay. Right, so if you... I find it quite useful to check this display field box for doing these. You just get much better visualisation of what you're doing. So this is the shape that we're going to walk into, but this isn't actually going to trigger anything, so we need a trigger to actually make something happen. So let's add an entity, triggers, and an area trigger, and uh, again let's drag this in. This area trigger can be, this is just something to attach our flow graph to, um, that will, so this is the thing that will allow us to tell the cinematic to work, start happening. This can be placed anywhere in the world, it doesn't matter where it is. However, we're going to link it to this shape, so it makes sense for it to be somewhere in the vicinity of the shape, so that when we're looking for this trigger and we, we want to modify this, we have some idea of where to look for it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to hook up this shape to the trigger. So if we select our shape again and we want to pick our target for this shape. So essentially we're going to attach this shape to this entity. So let's just pick the airy trigger and you should see a little line connecting one to the other. Now that we've done that, we can select our area trigger again. And now we're going to hook up our flow graph to this. So just right click on it and create flow graph. And let's give it a name. Right, so flow graph is, if you've ever used UDK, it's basically the same thing as Kismet. Um, there's loads of stuff that we can do in here, so if we go to add node, uh, right click somewhere, add node, this is all the kind of stuff that we can control through flow graph um, that we can visually script. So it is, it's actually extremely powerful flow graph. Um, there are other tutorials on the net that show you how to do things like create a entire an entire real-time strategy game using flow graph so that's kind of how powerful it can be if, if you if you spend the time 
messing around with it. All we want to do is something really simple though, we just want to play our cinematic. So to play the cinematics that's in add node, animations and play sequence. So let's just add one of these play sequence nodes and then we can select the sequence we want to play which is our cinematic one and that's all we need to do with that the only thing we need to do now is to tell it when to play this sequence and we want to do that when we hit this area trigger so let's select the area trigger right click in here and go add selected entity and on entering this entity we want to trigger this sequence this cinematic and that's it that's our flow graph done or at least I hope it is so now we can test if we drop into the game as soon as we walk into this trigger we should play our cinematic and there we are